Market at the day's low despite a strong open as global uncertainties continue to weigh healthcare and realty gain while FMCG and oil and gas drag the mid-caps outperform today. City Union Bank slips after RBI's audit assesses NPA numbers to be higher than reported by the bank while a 20-minute delivery promise revs up Jubilant Foodworks. Shah Metallics jumps after it acquires stainless steel maker Mithal Corp and draws up big capex plans while Uno Minda perks up on a technology alliance with Ascentech of Korea for wheel speed sensors. The health minister holds a meeting with COVID experts today in the light of the rise in cases in China, US, Brazil, Japan and Korea. Diagnostic stocks perk up but players don't see a significant upside in COVID revenues. And, co and cryptos should be prohibited, else the next financial crisis will emerge from the private crypto space, says RBI Governor Shakti Kanta Das. He adds that cryptos have no underlying value and trading in them is 100% speculation. Unlike cryptos, the CBDC is like currency notes, he adds. Hi guys, good afternoon and welcome to Business Lunch. I'm Pavitra Parekh. Those are all of the headlines that we have for you this afternoon. There's a lot to talk about, but the market is really taking center stage. We are at the low point of the day with a 100-point cut that is coming through on the Nifty. 18,280 is where we're at right now. And, you know, this is a significant slip from the opening levels when we did manage to get that gap up. Uh, the mid-caps were holding on much better. They were actually trading with a, uh, with a significant gain also through a better part of this morning. But now you've seen we have slipped into the red. It's a 150-point fall now on the mid-cap index that we are seeing. So at the low point over there as well, a lot of the pain coming through from the banks, 300 points lower on the Nifty Bank Index. What is holding up, however, today is some of the pharma names. So the likes of Divi, Sun, Cipla, all of these Apollo hospitals doing better. But remember, this sector did see big cuts yesterday as well. Some of the tech names also managing to hold in this otherwise weak setup. So HCL Tech, Tech M, Wipro, these are a few of the stocks which are managing to trade on the green. On the downside, it is some of the private banks and also a lot of the consumption names are seeing big cuts. So Godrej's consumer is down almost 2%. In addition to all of this, also keep your eye out on Reliance and uh, that one is seeing quite a big cut. So contributing also to the losses that we are seeing for the markets. That's what's going on with the market action. We're going to come back to this in just a bit. But first up, let me get you to, uh, through all of our stories. COVID-19 rages through China after the government has relaxed the zero COVID restrictions following nationwide uh, protests that we saw across the country. Now, a Reuters report says that authorities in several cities across China have scrambled to install hospital beds as well as build screening clinics after the capital city of Beijing reported five deaths on Tuesday. This after the Chinese government lifted the zero COVID policy and now fears are that infections will really explode because a large number of, res of uh, residents in the country do not have any natural immunity against the virus as they have had no previous exposure to it. In fact, reports are also indicating overburdened hospitals as well as cemeteries. They are struggling to you know, deal with the toll of rising COVID cases. So that is the latest that is coming through from the COVID situation in China. Now, the spike in COVID cases in China has also led to, you know, an alarm bell going through across India. The health minister is currently undertaking a review of the COVID preparedness in the country. And Abhimanyu is standing by to give us the latest from this. Abhimanyu? Well, the review meeting being conducted uh, under uh, under the chairmanship of the Union Health Minister is currently underway. Various experts, uh, including ICMR's uh, Director General and the Union Health Secretary, are also a part of the meeting. It remains to be seen whether any COVID measures like restrictions or restraints may be put on the movement of people, especially in, in wake of rise in cases of COVID across the United States, China, South Korea and Brazil. Uh, international travel as we understand has largely opened up and uh, it remains to be seen whether any restraint will be put by the union government in this regard. Yesterday, the union health ministry had asked all states to conduct genome sequencing of all COVID positive samples to take care of the fact that any new variants, if at all they come in, are detected on time. It remains to be seen whether any further steps will be taken by the union government in this regard, uh, though an advisory has already been issued to, the st to various states and the Maharashtra government has also indicated that they are in all likelihood going to form a committee to review the COVID situation in the state. 
All right, Abdul Manu, thanks a lot for getting us all of the details on the Health Minister's Review Meet, which is currently underway. We'll, of course, get back to you in, the, in case, you know, there's anything else that you can pick up from the meet. But staying with this, the Maharashtra Health Secretary has also told CNBC TV18 that as per the Union Health Ministry's advisory, all COVID samples will be sent for genome sequencing and COVID norms will be decided after the sequencing is done. He also said that the vaccination drive in the states is continuing and they were only intensified going forward. He added that there were no plans right now to conduct mass uh, mass testing and that the state government's health infrastructure is well in place to deal with a rise in COVID cases if we are to see one. So that is the latest that we are tracking on the COVID situation across China and then India's preparedness on dealing with the same. But let's now move on and bring you some more uh, interesting stories through the day. RBI Governor Shakti Kanta Das, while speaking at the Business Standard BFSI Insight Summit, has once again sounded the alarm over private cryptocurrencies. He said that if cryptos are to be allowed to grow, then we could see the next financial crisis from this space. He also addressed recessionary fears and spoke on credit growth trends in the banking sector. So let's listen in to all of those comments. They have absolutely no underlying. And not only that, I am yet to hear any credible argument about what public good or what public purpose it serves. If it is allowed to grow, you know, that if you try to regulate it and allow it to grow, please mark my words, the next financial crisis will come from private cryptocurrencies. Europe and uh, other countries, large number of countries are uh, facing, uh, you know, a series, you know, facing a very serious growth slowdown. Six months ago, the talk of, or five months ago, the talk of a global recession was much more intense. Now the expectations built around, built around recession have slightly moderated, but the fear of a recession in many parts of the world, or the fear of or the fact of slowing growth is quite visible in large parts of the world. The tightening of uh, financial conditions world over, all these factors, external factors, will have an impact on the domestic uh, growth scenario. But the underlying economic activity in India continues to be strong. The credit growth, 17.5%, that is the latest number as of December 2nd, which we have, I think, published, 17.5% credit growth. That reflects the, under, the underlying fundamentals of our economy. The credit growth in the previous two years were very, very modest. In the first year of COVID, the credit growth was just about 6% or so. The second year, it was slightly better. So on a low base, and that is the second point, the current 17.5% is on a low base of the previous two years. There is a base effect which is also playing its role here. So it's on a low base. And second point, it is reflective of, underlying, it is reflective of the underlying fundamentals of the economy. And it is also a reflection of the pent-up demand of the last, the pent-up demand for credit of the last two years. All right, that is the RBI governor speaking on a whole host of important issues, everything from cryptos to the kind of credit growth that we are seeing in the banking space. But on that note, now we are going to get into a short break. You don't go anywhere. There's lots more market action when we come back. आज तबीयत ठीक नहीं लग रही तुम ही सब काम निपटा दो ना अरे टेंशन किस बात की सेंचुरी एमडीएफ का लो एमिशन प्रीमियम प्लस है ना हाई डेंसिटी है वाटर रेजिस्टेंट भी है यानी ये है जहां नो टेंशन वहां लो एमिशन प्रीमियम प्लस बाय सेंचुरी प्रोवुड एलन इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स लिमिटेड वन ऑफ द लार्जेस्ट फ्रैक्शनल हॉर्स पावर मोटर मैन्युफैक्चरर्स इन इंडिया launches an initial public offering of equity shares of the face value of rupees 5 each in a price band of rupees 234 to rupees 247 per equity share bid off opens on december 20 2022 closes on december 22 2022 for risk factors and more details please refer to the rhp available on the websites of sebi the book running lead managers and the stock exchanges why did life test me why did it try to crush me, shake me, break me, 
Why me? Because it knew if I could take this test, I could take anything and say, that was easy. tuned into business lunch and let me get you an interesting chat now india is looking to become a responsible steel producer by promoting the use of sustainable steel and now bharat forge has become the first company in the country to roll out green steel which is a more sustainable form of steel so my colleague danish anand spoke to amit kalyani who's deputy managing director at bharat forge and began by asking him about the company's future plans as far as green steel goes so listen into that chat planet positive by which everything we do has to be towards enhancing the sustainability of the planet and therefore uh, creating the capability of making green steel by using uh, renewable resources by recycling by reducing usage of uh, uh, fossil fuels is a big step towards um, you know achieving the sustainable development goals globally so when it comes to the pricing will there be a major difference between the green steel the pricing of green steel in comparison to the conventional way we see a uh, steel being produced and uh, besides this uh, initially which will be those uh, industries that you will be targeting to sell green steel so i'll answer your second question first there are certain industries which are positioning themselves as green industries so everything to do with making renewable energy like wind turbines you know you can't make wind turbines and consume fossil fuels in making uh, wind turbines at least you want to reduce uh, the fossil fuel related and co2 related consumption or production in making such products similarly in uh, industries which are highly polluting and need to reduce their uh, carbon footprint such as energy production Uh, oil and gas uh, production they are definitely those which want to abate and reduce their carbon footprint so those are industries that are also keen to work with us and are taking the first mover advantage that we are providing uh, then it will be some of the more mass industries so today it's more the niche industries and then later on it will spread to more mass markets on the second on the first question you asked about pricing you know um, since we are amongst the first who are doing this um, the pricing obviously it is more expensive well a little more expensive to make this than conventional steel so now talking about the industry how is the current demand looking like and uh, what is the current capacity utilization like so our steel plants are running at full capacity utilization uh, but that is overall in steel production when it comes to green steel you know we can make one our one mill which is the plant in pune sarloha can be fully converted to making green steel today we forecast that in the first year we will probably make between 15 and 25% of green steel okay that is the management of bharat forge talking about the big push towards green steel but some more corporate commentary lined up for you honeywell has recently set up a center of excellence to focus on sustainability goals so abhimanyu sharma spoke to the managing director of the company and began by asking him about the various initiatives that they have rolled out the center of excellence for sustainability is a very exciting news for us uh, in india uh, not just as honeywellers but also for our customers because we are aiming to do a fundamental uh, research and development in the areas of uh, sustainability related solutions do you expect an uptick in execution as well as your top line if we look at honeywell india's revenues oh absolutely i think um, the the organization is um, about 116 year old now honeywell right and not too many companies which are conglomerates are able to say that which means that we have uh, withstood the test of time and uh, what i mean by now looking forward we believe that 
the next couple of decades, uh, this entire uh, piece of sustainability and the technologies related to that uh, are going to be the future for Honeywell as well. In view of easing of chip shortage and travel restrictions, do you expect a V-shaped recovery in your exports? Um, well, I don't know whether it will be a V-shape or any other shape, but I certainly know that there are some bright spots uh, in the uh, uh, over the um, over the global scenario that we uh, sort of monitor, and we certainly are going to look at those bright spots where there is more opportunity for us. Uh, we believe that the two areas, the two mega vectors that we are really uh, working uh, quite a lot on, uh, is the digitization and the sustainability part. When I talk about the digitization part, uh, more and more industries are adapting to uh, this change of doing things differently, you know, using uh, the digital power. And we have seen some of that in India as well. Uh, it also makes us, uh, you know, very much uh, capable of providing our services related to engineering and technology remotely, and therefore reducing the need for making people to go to the work and we rather bring the work to the people. So all of this new digital way of working is really helping. On the sustainability side, as we already talked about, there is a lot of excitement both in the industry as well as within Honeywell. And we therefore believe that with these two mega trends, uh, we will be able to see a good recovery. Uh, what, what do you term as the future indicators for a possibility of uh, ample availability of chips? We have seen chip shortage in the recent past and also uh, supply chains have been constrained in the recent past. Uh, what do you see as the future indicators for them? Well, first of all, the situation that we were in about a year, year and a half ago had certainly changed. So I see more and more of easing out of the chip supplies. All right, that is the, uh, the management of Honeywell Automation talking about the sustainability drive, also saying that they see bright spots as far as exports go for the company. But here's another important story that we are tracking. Sources are telling us that the government is mulling changes to the bankruptcy code. Sapna is here to tell us more about that. Sapna? Absolutely. Uh, what we are given to understand is, uh, you know, some uh, set of wide-ranging amendments uh, is like we proposed to the IBC. And uh, the aim here very clearly is to uh, maximize value, cut delays and expedite the resolution process under IBC. Uh, you know, that's the broad spirit under which uh, the government is working on these proposed changes. Uh, it could also be possible that a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of part which is there in the rules right now. And, you know, sometimes industry says that, well, it's not part of the act it's part of the rule and many a time certain things go unimplemented uh, hence a lot of stuff could also be picked up from the rules and regulations of IBC itself and brought on to the code so we are given to understand that the nature of the amendments is likely to be wide ranging uh, you know uh, and basically to cut on the timelines not just for admission of applications but possibly the litigation process itself the liquidation process itself uh, you know, even uh, the time taken for the bids uh, to actually be ac accepted by the adjudicating authorities. So all of that is under review at the moment. Uh, you know, if all goes well, then maybe by in the second half of the budget session, uh, the government could be in a position to bring out these amendments. But uh, there is a lot of scope within uh, within the amendments being proposed. And uh, almost every aspect of the proposed amendments is like, you know, uh, a life of itself. A creature of its own so uh, we'll have to just watch out as to how they really pan out uh, you know probably in uh, a few days we'll have more details to be put out but as of now this is what we're given to understand all right Sapna thanks a lot for getting us all of those details on this important story but with that we have to get into a short break now on the other side we're going to recap what has been a truly brutal year for the tech sector so stay tuned for that special We thank all our stakeholders on this glorious 112th Foundation Day, central to you since 1911. Now, Firewall Technology ke saath. Century Plight Club Prime. Aag se bachai. Invest once and enjoy guaranteed maturity with life cover with LIC's Dhan Varsha, a single premium plan for your family's security and prosperity. देखो 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 नया टीवी देखो आ गॉट द वेजीज फ्रॉम छोटू शॉप ही गिव्स द राइट रेट यस पापा 
डिसाइडेड फिफ्टी फाइव इंच टीवी ऑन दिस वॉल ओ सुपर आई राइट आउट द चेक टुमारो नो यू डोंट I will with my own money. Oh wow! How come? Look at this advertisement. Thirty percent a short returns on investment. I am also going to invest my money. Hmm. So vegetables only from Chhotu shop, but investment advice from anyone. Papa, trusting a stranger's advice is never wise. But what about the TV? Soch kar, samaj kar, invest kar, invest kar. Volkswagen Tiguan, India's safest SUV. W. Volkswagen. Overburdened by your utility bills? Relax. Pay all your utility bills with Canara Bank AI One, the banking super app. Download today. क्योंकि आपके सपने हमारे अपने Welcome back. You're still tuned into Business Lunch. Now, as we wind down on this year, here is something interesting for you. After delivering healthy profits during the pandemic lockdowns, tech giants lost trillions of dollars in market cap in the big tech sell-off of 2022. Not just that, recession fears across the world also led to massive layoffs across the industry. So, as we wind down on 2022, Rima takes a look and recaps what has been a brutal year for the tech sector. Rima. It's been a brutal year for tech giants around the world. Apple stock is down about 18% so far and it is one of the better performers. Facebook owner Meta, Amazon, Netflix, Google's parent company Alphabet have all fared far worse with Meta plunging nearly 65% this year. The other tech giants of Nasdaq, chip giant Nvidia, Elon Musk, Tesla are also down massively so far in 2022. What's hurting? Rising interest rates macroeconomic uncertainty and global pressures recession worries are hurting amazon and apple and concerns about a strategy shift for example meta going all in on augmented and virtual reality netflix embracing advertising for the first time ever is also hurting let's talk about what happened back home in india now 2022 has marked a sharp decline in stock prices of indian id giants as they moved in step with the global counterparts as this things currently stand This year could be the worst year for Nifty IT since 2008 when the index was down close to 55%. The reason PED rating as global interest rates went up and then there were some EPS cuts as growth forecasts moderated. TCS is now trading at a forward multiple of 25 26 times. The peak was 32 times and the list goes on with Infi, HCL all trading at a much lower valuations compared to their peak. The worry is also about what next year holds. Analysts estimate that growth will slow down further. Nomura is saying the U.S. dollar revenue growth to slow down to 8% next year versus 12.7% in FY23 for the big companies. The next big story of 2022 were the tech layoffs. Now, according to a layoff tracking website, layoffs.fii, data as of mid-December shows nearly 1,000 tech companies have laid off close to one and a half lakh employees, and that includes biggies like Meta, Google, Amazon. They've laid off thousands of employees, and the question is, will this belt tightening continue next year? And the answer is probably yes. Many companies which have not announced their job cuts yet are likely to do so next year. HP is looking to pull back on its workforce. Reports suggest Google is looking to axe about 10,000 employees next year. And here we're only talking about the multinational tech giants. There are so many smaller startup companies where we are seeing some big job cuts too. But the biggest news maker of the year for me is Apple, which moved its iPhone 14 production to India. Now Apple has been assembling smartphones in India since 2017. But up until this year, Apple used the manufacturing facilities in India to assemble the older generation handsets, the legacy models. 
This year, 2022, was the first time Apple produced the latest smartphones. They produced the phones as the same year as its release. Just a few months of lag compared to China. And the story is, we've just gotten started. According to JP Morgan, every fourth iPhone will be made in India by 2025. What's the driver of this big shift? China unrest, reduce your dependency on China, and an affirmation of India's PLI scheme. According to India Cellular and Electronics Association, India is likely to export handsets worth 9 billion in FI23 versus 5.8 billion in FI22, a whopping jump of 55%. And this is the big question as we step into 2023. Can India become the new smartphone manufacturing factory for the world? All right, that was a complete roundup and recap of what has been a brutal year for the tech sector. Reema, thanks a lot for that. But on that note, now we're going to have to wind down on this edition of Business Lunch. Thank you guys very much for tuning in. And stay with us because Midcap Radar comes up on the other side of this short break.